Mulch has been called the greatest gift you can give your soil. It's a protective blanket, a slow-release feast, and a gardener's best friend for suppressing weeds and holding in moisture. We spread it with care, trusting that deep down, it's working its magic. But there's a part of mulch that almost nobody talks about. A layer so often overlooked, it's frequently raked away and discarded for being messy. And this forgotten layer feeds soil even faster than compost. Today, I'm revealing the secret, hidden right on top of your garden a dynamic ecosystem that can transform your soil's health almost overnight. When we lay mulch, we think the magic happens underneath, where the thick woody material slowly decomposes over months or even years. But nature has a different strategy. The first thing nature builds is called the litter layer. It's the loose, scrappy, flaky bits that sit above the main mulch. Think of a forest floor. It's not a neat carpet of wood chips but a jumble of fallen leaves, twigs and organic debris. This is what we want to replicate. This litter layer dries, cracks, and looks messy. It's exposed to the sun and wind, making it the most vulnerable part of your mulch. But this apparent weakness is its greatest strength. Because it's made of small, thin pieces with a huge surface area, this is where fungi first colonize and begin the feast. These are the primary decomposers, the pioneers, that unlock nutrients for everyone else. They break down those thin pieces at lightning speed, far faster than the dense, chunky mulch buried below. Meanwhile, that main mulch layer stays cool, protected, and breaks down slowly, acting as a long-term reservoir of organic matter. That top messy layer? It disappears first, becoming a rapid infusion of food for the soil. This quick-release system is what makes the litter layer so powerful. It becomes food for microbes long before compost does because it's already in place, being processed 24-7 right where your plants need it. And here's the twist. The more types of litter you add, the faster the feast. A diverse diet encourages a diverse population of soil organisms. So, what can you use? Think thin and varied. Dried leaves, shredded cardboard without glossy inks, dried grass clippings, small wood shavings, and even weeds without seeds. These mix together like a gourmet buffet for soil life. So, how do you build it? It's simple. Start by collecting your materials. A dedicated bin for dry leaves or a paper shredder for cardboard makes it easy. When you apply it, think little and often. Sprinkle a thin layer, no more than half an inch, over your existing mulch every few weeks. This prevents it from matting down and blocking air and water. After applying, it's a great idea to water it in lightly. This helps it make contact with the layers below and kickstarts the fungal activity. The best time to add more is after a good rain, when the whole system is moist and active. Beneath this active litter layer the soil stays dark, moist, and perfectly protected from the harsh sun. This creates a stable environment, buffering against extreme temperature swings and dramatically reducing water evaporation. You'll find you need to water less often, because the soil is holding onto moisture so much more effectively. Moisture is the key that unlocks decomposition. Every drop of water held by the litter layer is an opportunity. It's used by microbes to break down organic matter, converting it into stable humus, the dark spongy material that gives healthy soil its structure and fertility. Every drop becomes humus faster. And it's not just microbes. Earthworms, the architects of the soil, are drawn to this easy food source. They pull these tiny bits down into their burrows like pizza slices, dragged into an underground party, mixing the nutrients deep into the soil profile. Now let's talk about common mistakes. The biggest one is clearing away the ugly parts of mulch because they look untidy. You're throwing away the most active life-giving layer. Another mistake is applying too thick a layer of fine material, like grass clippings, which can form a dense, water-repellent mat. If you see this happen, just gently fluff it up with a rake to let air and water through. What about some common myths? Many gardeners worry that adding woody materials will rob the soil of nitrogen. While it's true that decomposition uses nitrogen, this process is happening right at the surface. The nitrogen is temporarily tied up in the bodies of microbes, but it's quickly released back into the system as they die and are consumed. It doesn't affect the nitrogen available to plant roots deeper down. Another concern is pests. Will this layer attract slugs and other unwanted guests? A healthy diverse ecosystem rarely has major pest problems. By encouraging predatory ground beetles and other beneficial insects who love this habitat, you create a self-regulating system. The key is balance and diversity. So let the litter layer grow. Embrace the mess. 
Messy mulch means active soil. Add new thin layers often, especially in the warm, active months of spring and summer. And most importantly, always cover bare soil. Exposed soil is dead soil. The sun bakes it, killing the life within. A constant cover keeps the soil life partying nonstop. Give nature scraps, and she will give you black gold. The results are undeniable. Healthier plants with more robust immune systems, deeper roots that can access more water and nutrients, and soil that stays alive and productive all year long. Let the litter layer do the work. Compost can't do as fast. It's the ultimate expression of surface decomposition, nature's own rapid cycling nutrient system. Feed the top, and the soil below will thrive. It's a small shift in perspective that yields enormous rewards for your garden and the planet beneath your feet. If you found this helpful, give us a like and subscribe for more secrets from the soil. Soil Story. Bringing the earth beneath your feet back to life.